computer. Okay, next up is a, another really cool teaching platform called Scalable Game Design coming out of the University of Colorado. Good afternoon, how are you guys? Good? So I'm Alexander Eppening, professor at the University of Colorado, so not a, a New York local, obviously. We have done a lot of research over the 20 last uh, years, kind of shocking for, for me how time has flown. So we created programming environments for kids, pioneered things like visual programming languages for kids, but today I want to show you Agent Cubes. What we have achieved is actually with the support of the National Science Foundation, we have developed working strategies to bring computer science education into middle schools and train teachers, which is a difficult challenge. And uh, we have uh, explored this in very different areas, remote rural areas, Native American communities and inner city schools, and started to also look at places like Brazil and Germany. So what is the key? Why can we actually get kids to like this? It's all about ownership and creativity. And so as a little experiment, I'm going to sort of create a live project for you. And then there's sort of a benchmark in the 3D community, how to make a volcano. So I'm going to go into Agent Cubes. This is the programming environment. And this is all going to be live, so high risk scenario. On the left hand side, I'm going to try to draw sort of from the top a volcano. I'm going to pick a brown color here. So I'm going to make an uneven uh, outline, which is not that hard to do because I'm using a trackpad. So this would be sort of the volcano from the top. I fill it in. Doesn't look much like a volcano yet over here. I'm going to inflate it. Still not very compelling. Looks too smooth, right? We're not happy with this. I'm going to add a little noise. It's, get, it's getting a little better, right? So here's our volcano. But of course, you know, this isn't quite a, a right volcano without some lava, so I'm going to add some lava, boom. Picking a red color, drawing sort of a little lava inside here. Now there's some lava on top of the volcano, but that doesn't look quite right. <laughs> right? So I'm going to select just the color, remove the noise. Now let's spin the volcano around. I'm going to push down the ceiling. And of course, we can just continue drawing. So I, I pick, uh, for instance, the red color here. The lava is leaking out. So the only complaints we were getting from teachers, they said, this is too engaging. Our, our kids are too engaged. They're spending all this time at the computer doing these things and trying to program them. And we said, that's perfect. You know, no problem here. So let's say that's our volcano. So I'm going to put one volcano in this world, or, or a couple. And since we have a couple of seconds left, I can actually program them. Right, so what I'm going to do here is I just want to say, uh, let's move them around randomly. I'm going to have them spin, rotate 90 degrees. Right, so, there's, so everything is happening in parallel. Of course, now I can pick a single volcano, go in first person view. And so here's our game, right? I, I created this from scratch in just a couple of seconds. And now, just to finalize my presentation, so if you want to have more information, here's the website. Feel free to send me an email or read an article that just came out in the October issue of Wired. Thank you very much. I spent some time in Colorado, so it just feels so good to hear that Colorado accent. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>